Of course, that means that certain rude behaviors have become commonplace because people think that proper etiquette is all about knowing how to set a dinner table and stand up straight. But proper etiquette doesn't always mean knowing what to do with your napkin at a formal dinner party, standing up when a lady walks into the room, or saying please and thank you. Sometimes, being a proper person is as easy as being on time, knowing when, and when not to, check your cell phone, and remembering to be honest with your friends. Being late, it seems to be that the more we can connect with people, the less regard we actually have for them. Just because you can easily text someone to let them know you're running 20 minutes behind, doesn't mean you should allow yourself the opportunity to run 20 minutes behind. If you promise to be somewhere at 1 p.m., be there at 1.05 at the absolute latest. Being obnoxious on social media, sure it's your Twitter Instagram Facebook account and you can say what you want but your online personality is really a stranger's first impression of you. And if you're on the hunt for a job, significant other, or new circle of friends, you can be sure that your accounts will be stalked by all of the above. Be conscious and aware of what you are posting and if you've got strong feelings about something, choose an eloquent way to express yourself. Checking your phone. No matter how entertaining the text or funny that tweet is, resist the urge to check your phone during a real-life conversation with someone. If you happen to be expecting an important call pertaining to a job or the well-being of a family member, let the person know before you start talking and only check when absolutely necessary. Discussing things via text or email, we all know how much easier it is to text rather than call or gasp talk to someone in person but human contact is still important especially if the relationship or topic of discussion is important if you're discussing a serious subject or even just having a lengthy conversation it's much more proper and efficient to just pick up the phone or meet for a coffee flagging down a waiter or bartender everyone knows that snapping your fingers and saying darken is the epitome of being rude at a restaurant, but that's not the only way you can annoy your server without even knowing it. Raising your hand in any manner, whether it's to sign for a refill on your Diet Coke or waving the signature for your check, is rude. If you want your waiter's attention, just try and make eye contact. They'll notice you. Gift giving, arriving without anything for the host makes it seem like the invite was no big deal. Whether you're watching the game at a friend's house or attending a formal dinner party, bring a little something to say you appreciate being included, be it a six pack or a batch of cupcakes. On the other hand, if an invite indicates no gifts please, respect the host's wishes. Grooming in public, we all hate hangnails, but clipping your fingernails, brushing your hair, Flossing your teeth, or putting on your makeup are all things that need to be done in a bathroom. Your co-workers, fellow commuters, or dinner guests don't need to see you picking at your teeth. It's grosser than you think. Not making introductions, you're talking to a friend. Another walks up and you ask how he's been. He says great, you say great, and he's on his way. The first friend just got a dose of what it feels like to be MR or Ms. Unimportant. Always attempt to make an introduction. And if you're avoiding doing so because you forgot someone's name, fess up and say so. Chances are you'll never forget it again. Splitting up the tab, inviting guests to a bar celebration and then expecting them to split the check at the end of the night could potentially be considered rude. If you are hosting a party at your house, are you going to ask all the guests to pay up for groceries when they get there? Yeah. We didn't think so. When you invite a group of people to the local pub for your birthday, specify on the invite if you are expecting them to pay their own way. Otherwise, it's on you. Requesting a meal. If you're going to accept an invitation to a dinner party, don't expect the host to organize a special meal just for you because you are off sugar that week or are giving the paleo diet a try. If you've dedicated yourself to a specific lifestyle like vegetarianism or veganism, don't announce your dietary restrictions in your RSVP unless specifically asked. Instead, bring something you and the rest of the guests can munch on as an offering, or eat up before you go. Of course, if you're allergic to something, you should absolutely mention that ahead of time. Sending an RSVP at the last minute, 
proper etiquette dictates that you actually need to respond to an RSVP within 24 hours. If you're unsure whether or not you'll be able to attend an event, call the host and let them know that you'll need to check your schedule and RSVP at a later date. Waiting until the last minute just to wait and see is actually really rude to your host. Speaker phone. Although your life may seem entertaining at times, you aren't on a reality show. Turn off the speaker phone. The person on the other end might not want their half of the conversation being overheard by everyone in the elevator or in your office. Similarly, your conversation may be fascinating to you, but the people around you certainly don't need, or want, to hear it. Talking politics and religion. This is the oldest etiquette rule in the books. Funny how the one rule our grandparents swore by is still one of the most broken today. Everyone wants to seem in the know. Remember, though, that there is a reason there are certain topics that are off limits, especially when just meeting someone or sitting at the dinner table. If these touchy topics come up, diffuse the situation and change the topic as soon as you possibly can. Telling little white lies. Little white lies may seem innocent. You just don't feel like attending your friend's dog's birthday party. Don't tell them your aunt is in town when really you'll be at home with a bottle of rose and Netflix. You don't want to be overly honest to the point of being insulting, but be truthful with your friends. Little white lies are actually really rude. Wandering eyes. Nothing says I don't want to be here quite like roaming eyes in the middle of an evening. Your eyes should always remain focused on your party, regardless of how boring their photos of their nephew at the splash pad are. The same goes leaving your cell phone on the table during dinner. Don't do it. It's rude and tells your tablamate that you'd rather be engaging with a slab of high-tech fiberglass than them.